humanity has made some objects travel at nearly the speed of light. 99.999999% the speed of light, in fact. That's so fast that if we race light to the moon with these objects, light would only win by a total of 4 meters. How did we manage to do that? In science fiction, people travel faster than light all the time. But here in reality, physics doesn't let anything go faster than light. In fact, practically, we haven't come anywhere close to that speed. The fastest man-made object in existence, a probe being sent to study the sun, will travel at over 700,000 kilometers an hour. That may sound fast, but light goes at over a billion kilometers an hour. So our probe is only traveling at a small fraction of 1% the speed of light. The objects we turn to when we feel the need for this much speed are subatomic particles. Protons are subatomic particles that are present in every atom. They're accelerated to nearly the speed of light by the biggest particle accelerator we've ever built, the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC. The fact that they're charged is the key to making this work. Two positively charged particles will repel each other. Same with two negatively charged ones. That's the key to letting us use electromagnetic fields to push these protons around. Let's take a look at how the LHC does this. The LHC isn't an entirely new machine. Instead, it's built out of the bones of every previous particle accelerator built by its operators at CERN. Over the years, CERN has built several of what were the biggest particle accelerators of their time. Now those earlier accelerators help speed up the protons and put them on the way into the LHC. Protons start off by traveling down a linear tube where electromagnetic fields give them a constant push forward. From there, they enter into a series of loops, with each loop giving a bit more speed to them before they're injected into the 26 kilometer long ring of the LHC. The 26-kilometer long tube is packed with magnets. Some of these magnets help keep the protons moving straight as they head down the tube. Others help impart a bit of a curve so that they go around the circular path of the LHC. The tube carries two sets of protons, which run around the ring in opposite directions. They cross paths at several points to create collisions. And there's one spot in the entire ring where protons are given a little kick and sped up. At that location, the protons pass through what's called the resonator. The resonator hosts what you can consider a wave in the electromagnetic field. Things are timed so that a bunch of protons enters the resonator just ahead of a peak in the electromagnetic wave. From there, they surf the peak of the wave across, picking up speed as they do. As the protons exit, the wave reverses and rushes across to the opposite side of the resonator. This lets it push the protons traveling in the opposite direction. By speeding up the rate at which the wave reverses, you can accelerate the protons to ever higher speeds. And by timing the flips carefully, you can use it to accelerate things going in opposite directions. You may have noticed a little problem here, in that protons are a bit like cars. If they keep trying to take a turn ever and ever faster, eventually they'll hit a speed where they can't make the turn and end up flying off the road. So we need something to do a little bit of extra steering each time the protons run through. And that's done by the magnets at the LHC. The magnets have to be adjusted so they're a little stronger each time the protons go through. This keeps them from spinning off course in the curves. One consequence of this is that the top speed of the LHC isn't set by the resonator which does the speeding up. Instead, it's set by the magnets that keep things under control in the curves. Another problem you might have noticed is that we said that the LHC deals with bunches of protons, all of which have the same charge. And we mentioned that two positive charges will always repel each other. So why doesn't this repulsion keep the bunches of protons from just flying apart? This problem is solved by Einstein's theory of relativity. One of the consequences of relativity is that if you keep accelerating things near the speed of light, instead of going faster, will just get heavier. As a result, the LHC makes the protons more massive as it speeds them up. And as they get more massive, it takes more force to push them around. Just like a bowling ball is harder to push around than a ping pong ball. One consequence of this is that the push that comes from having the protons all be the same charge has less and less of an effect as they get more massive. So accelerators like the LHC solve one of their problems simply by doing their job. All of this adds up to allowing us to bring protons up to a speed that few of us can possibly imagine.